All right, so we're going to be working on uh, Griffith's quantum mechanics problem 1.5 part A here, where we're going to be normalizing a wave function. All credit goes to uh, Griffith's for this problem. It's an excellent problem. Griffith's also wrote an excellent uh, textbook. So let's get started with this problem. We're given the following wave function here, and we're asked to normalize this wave function. And basically, that just means it, that when we want to normalize a wave function, we want to just plug this wave function into our normalization condition, which is the following. Um, and when we do this, we're basically going to be setting t equal to zero. I did an entire video uh, detailing uh, why the normalization condition, this guy, uh, doesn't change with time, and what we're going to be basically just trying to solve for uh, is we're going to uh, we're going to plug this into our normalization condition and just solve for this constant a out in front. Anytime we're normalizing something, that's generally speaking what we're doing. A is a constant, and lambda is a constant. All right, and so what we're going to do here actually is we're going to uh, plug in. Uh, zero into our wave function here, and that's going to completely do away with this uh, complex exponential here, and we're just going to be left with a e to the minus lambda absolute value of x. All right, now we can take the magnitude squared of this guy, and we're just going to end up getting magnitude of a squared e to the minus 2 lambda absolute value of x okay and before we do any integrating one of the things that is incredibly useful anytime you're dealing with these wave functions is to actually inspect them or, or graph them if you can't you know visualize them uh, in your head a great way to do this is to plug it into desmos mathematica Python, whatever your favorite plotting software is, plug uh, your function into it. Now, uh, when we plot this, we're going to plot just our normal uh, our, our wave function here at uh, t equals zero, and you can see here that a is a constant and lambda is a constant. So just for simplicity, just so I can get a general idea of what our shape is going to look like, uh, I'm going to set both of these equal to one. Okay. And when we plot this, we get this following result uh, right here. Now, obviously, this is only on minus 5 to 5, but you can see it's symmetric about uh, both sides. And so what we, can, what we get here is we get more or less a, uh, a growing exponential on one side, and then we get a decaying exponential on the other side. And so what we, what we can do is we can either break this up into two integrals on negative infinity to zero of a growing exponential and then do a uh, decaying exponential from zero to infinity, or we can just do one of them and multiply by two. So for the sake of this problem, what I'm going to end up doing here is uh, I'm going to end up doing both of, both of them. So we're going to get the following bit of integration. Uh, infinity, uh, so integral minus infinity to zero of the absolute value of a squared e to the uh, two lambda x, and our absolute value goes away now because we're doing both sides plus the integral from zero to infinity magnitude squared of a e to the minus 2 lambda x dx equals 1 and we're going to be taking this entire thing and we're going to be uh, solving for a again okay so we have our equation here and let's evaluate the two of these we can do this pretty easily with just a standard u substitution so let's break it up and do our u substitutions here we're going to set u equal to 2 lambda x so du is 2 lambda dx and then over here u is equal to minus 2 lambda x 
So du is equal to minus 2 lambda dx. And when we do this integration, we get the following. We're going to get the magnitude of a squared times the quantity of 1 on 2 lambda integral minus infinity to 0 of e to the u du plus a 1 on minus 2 lambda. So this actually turns into a minus if you want it to, but we're just going to leave it that way. I know that might aggravate some people. I like seeing it that way, so I'm just going to do it that way. Uh, integral, uh, integral 0 to infinity of e to the u du and again all of this still just equals 1 but now we can simplify this thing uh, pretty pretty easily because if you notice we have opposite bounds and we have an extra minus sign being tacked on here so we can simplify this further down to a minus a squared per lambda times the integral 0 to infinity that is a terrible infinity of e to the u du is equal to 1. And again, this all comes from the geometry we employed right here. Okay? We could we could have just taken one of these integrals, let's say this one, and multiplied by 2 and gotten the same result, but we decided to just add the two together, and lo and behold, we basically just got the same thing, but multiplied by 2. So, really, we didn't have to do anything all that crazy or all that insane. So, well, let's just do this aside. And when we evaluate this guy, we get that the absolute value of a squared divided by lambda is equal to 1. Then, what we, then we can just do a little bit of algebra to see that a is equal to the square root of lambda. And now we know our constant out in front. And so we can plug that in and just have a normalized wave function. So when we do that, e to the minus lambda absolute value of x, e to the i omega t minus i omega t. And this is our normalized wave function. Now in part, now in part b, we're going to be finding the expectation value of x for this wave function, the expectation value of x squared, and then also sigma. So tune into that. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section down below. And uh, thanks for watching.